Good Shabbos, Likovid Shabbos. Oi, Chatz, Kele Likovid Shabbos. Oi, da di da da. Da 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 da. Driving on the freeway on Shabbos, the first thought I had is that uh, the Tchum Shabbos and the fact that it's better to take local roads because there's no food on the freeway. So a whole shayla of the Tchum and the stretch. And then we thought about how we used to go over the bridge from Brooklyn to Manhattan to do taluchas, special taluchas we would do on Shabbos to give over sikhs of the Rebbe. And we weren't strategic about it. What shows should we hit up? Are we going to make new followers to the movement? Are we going to make new friends? Friends to the movement is also beneficial. And there were different types. Some of us just thought, you know, we're going to cross the bridge and God's going to figure it out and something good's going to come of it. Or we're just going on talucha, we're just going to go. And then my Satmer friend said to me how one thing stayed after he left Judaism was sleeping Shabbos afternoon. And I said, we in Lubavitch never had a Shabbos afternoon sleep. And he says, but it's a halacha. So I said, look, halacha, we, don't, we, do, we do not deny the Shabbos minig and the beautiful Judaism, as a Friedrich Rebbe would say when he went to Poland, he said it's a beautiful Judaism, yefei mare, he called it. We do not deny it. We were in a war, crossing bridges in Shabbos shoes. By the way, I have my Shabbos shoes and my Shabbos pants, Shabbos shorts today. Beautiful Shabbos shorts. We were in, you know, we were uh, just uh, during a war, you can't be religious, as the Orthodox would say about the Israeli military, that you can't, that the boys in the yeshiva can't be religious in the army. The truth is they, what, what? The soldiers pray the most. What do you mean? What aspect of religion? They mean the Cholent on Shabbos. But the truth is when Israel needed combatants during the high times, they cooked up a fucking Cholent for these soldiers and they had Haredis fighting. But that's before the whole movement turned into what it is today. We had different types of... Uh, Strategists. We had the Schmerlings and the Hellers who would know how to speak to the Orthodox Jews. Then you had the Bruce Backmans who could talk to the YU guys and maybe the Ivy Leagues. Give them over a sicha from the Rebbe and maybe stick in some magic that the Rebbe does. Uh, get people involved in any way possible, you know. But sh sleeping on Shabbos, you know, when you're in a war, when you're in an army, you can't really do all these things. All the comforts of religion, it's not part of the program. And then we had the Chesky Mulamids, the beautiful the American Judaism boy that would go to Manhattan. Chesky did, just did the walk, Talucha, he didn't have to do the talk. He said, you want American Judaism? Look at me. And one sexy Jew. You want to be the Reform Judaism, a rabbi calling for meetings because he's hoping he's going to get his check chasing his salary? Or you want this? Chesky Malamed wasn't uh, scratching his head like Mendel Mintz. Wow, this is a sikha that the Bnei Teide are going to like. Wow, the yeshiva world is going to for sure, they're not going to be able to step on this one. Chesky Malamed on Yom Tif, on Taluch is walking across the bridge. This is my last chassan cigarette. <laughs> Swear to God, this is my last cigarette. <laughs> Don't break it. And he would come and he would say, look at me. You want this Judaism or you want the crap? You want the ultra-Orthodox? You want the extremists? You want the ones washed of ritual, the dry reform? Or you want this in the middle, like the Rambam style? Look at me. I'm happy and I'm religious. And I'm Shemr Shabbos. And that would attract everyone. The extremists wanted in. And the washed of ritual, uh, dry reform and secular Jews wanted in. Everyone wanted in when Chesky Malaman came to town and the other guys are scratching their heads about the The Rebbe gave a sicha about an old lady. She looks out the window, she sees Bachrim with tzitzis. She reminds herself about her grandfather. Oh look, those people are walking on Shabbos, so beautiful. Lubavitch for sure. And it would see, uh, um, on, uh, 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 what do you call it? <laughs> We would see, uh, 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 she would think about her grandfather and it would get her. There were things that Rebbe couldn't say by Fabrengans because every Rebbe in the history of Rebbe's and Hasidism had things that were just too sexy to say. 
The Rebbe was talking not about two Bachrim, but he was talking about Cheski Malamed. And he wasn't talking about the old lady. When we needed a check from the old lady, the Lubavitch youth needed a good few thousand dollars and these old ladies on Park Avenue, how do you get it? You get a Puerto Rican kid to knock off your yarmulke and steal your dreidel right when she's walking out of the building crawling into her limo. And when she sees that, she writes a fucking check. She's got Hadassah on the Jewish Federation beg letters piled to the sky. Logic is not going to work. Emotions work. But when, when the Rebbe is talking about someone looking out of the window, it's a young Jewish boy, and he wants to know, what is the hottest Jewish club to be a part of? And that, the Hellers and Schmerlings didn't slice it. You want to slice Judaism sexy? You want the right sliced kosher salami? That was only with Chesky Malamed. And that's what the Rebbe was talking about. But the Rebbe could not say that by a Fabrengen. No Rebbe in the history of Rebbe's could say the real stuff. And you got to scratch your head and you got to figure it out because you want it. You want to accomplish. You want to be a big macher. Got to use some brains in the game. A shliach in Andover, Massachusetts, Rabbi Usher Bronstein told me, right by Gimel Tamuz, Tavshin and Dalid, he tells his wife, so I guess we're calling the moving truck. The show is over. We're closing up shop. And he said, but you know what gave me kayach to carry on? What made this continue? The Mishachistim, the Yechi, the dancing, the fact that they were kicking it. Well, I looked it up and he was wrong. It was Shia Gordon and Chesky Malamed that made Lubavitch survive. It was the two sexy Jewish boys who said, it will go on, the Judaism will continue, the middle ground. We're not going to give up hope. We're not going to be extreme. We're not going to jump in the lake like all the Jewish messiahs used to make the followers do. And we're not going to uh, uh, give up and become secular. We're going to rock this and we're going to make the real estate shoot through the roof. So I thought that because it's Shabbos, there's no chance we're going to get any good coffee. We're going to be instant coffee with Klisheni. And then the housekeeper comes and she says, I can do it for you. You want to have coffee on Shabbos? So the housekeeper comes and she says, I can make you the coffee. And I'm like, ah, genius. And then she made the fancy coffee for me. And it's like, I didn't violate Shabbos. Everybody's happy.